In this video, we'll learn a quantitative way of assessing a market structure because there are uh, a few properties that we observe regarding the market structure that is the number of buyers and sellers and their ability to determine the market price, the level of information, etc. But if we have a quantitative way, we can readily decide if we are dealing with a monopoly or a monopolistic competition or any oligopoly or perfect competition. So in this video, we'll learn the uh, method that will allow us to quantitatively decide uh, the nature of the market structure that we are dealing with. Um, before we go ahead, you can subscribe to this channel if you haven't, so that the growth of this channel could benefit more people in learning more about quantitative ways of uh, understanding economics. Um, so let's talk about this uh, index because it is basically an index contributed by two people, Harshanda and Hirschman. Uh, their collective contribution uh, to economics is known as this Harfandal Hirschman Index, and it is um, uh, put in a brief form that is the acronym of HHI. Um, if you talk about how we calculate it, it has a simple formula because it is basically the sum of the squared market structures shares of all the oligopolists that are uh, working in a um, market because most of the times we use this index in the determination of the market structure when it comes to oligopolies. So here we are referring to oligopolies. But we can use the same formula to determine any sort of market structure as we can see that it can be used to any kind of market structure. But assuming that if we are dealing with oligopoly, uh, this is the formula uh, that we will, uh, we will be applying. Uh, it is basically the sum of the uh, market structures. This MS is market structure, uh, market share of the ith firm and this is the market structure of overall that is all firms or n firms and this is the 100 to convert it into percentages. So uh, since the market share is usually 100% so it gets cancelled out and usually we are left with the market share of the certain firm. We take it square and then we add all those squares. Now uh, if we talk about the range of this HHI uh, it is basically uh, starting from 0 and it goes to 10,000. The reason is simple uh, that if the markets they do not have any uh, substantial share, the firms if they do not have any substantial share, the squares of their shares will become even smaller because we know when we square the term, if it is less than 1 and if it is closer to 0, it will become smaller and smaller. So when we uh, take the sum of these uh, firms market shares squares, it will uh, reach close to zero. It may not be precisely equal to zero, uh, but it will approach to zero. And it will be 10,000 if the market share of one firm is equal to 100, then the um, square of it will be 10,000. So it will reveal the presence of a monopoly. So you see, um, from perfect competition till monopoly, it has equal ap applicability and we can use it. Now let's take an example of an oligopolist situation where there are three firms that is A, B, C. Uh, A has 50% share of the sales and B has 30% and C has 20% of the overall sales. Now we can use this formula and it is quite easy to apply this because we are going to uh, use this market share which is measured in terms of the volume of the sales or revenues. So here you can see the first firm, its share, second firm share and the third firm share. Here we have put A, B, C, the three firms in the subscript so that it becomes more understandable. The final answer of it would be 3800, which is between this range that we have already understood. So this range is uh, representing oligopoly. How it determines that it is oligopoly, let us see. Um, for example, if uh, these are various ranges, these will be the forms of market structure that we will expect or the level of competition. So HHI, if it is uh, approaching to zero, not precisely equal to zero, mathematically speaking, if it is approaching to zero and its highest possible value uh, in within this certain range is 1000, then it is strongly competitive because it is on this side where the firms have smaller shares due to which the sum of their squares is low. And if the uh, answer is from 1001 till 1800, it will be somewhat competitive which is representing uh, a sort of monopolistic competition and if it is higher than that uh, into this range that is 1801 till 9000 then uh, it is representing oligopoly 
in between somewhere we can have further ranges but this is one of the tables that we have drawn there are more than one tables that are there available but we are resorting to this table in which only four levels are determined and if this answer is greater than 9000 that is from 9001 till um, 10,000 then it is an effective monopoly because this is the highest level it means that the share is uh, on the higher side due to which it's square and then the sum of the squares is a high value and if it is equal to 10,000 it means that 100% share is of one form the square of 100% will be 10,000 and that will uh, reveal the presence of a monopoly so uh, this range actually shows that the inclination is towards the monopoly so here you can see the answer that we found was 3800 and it falls uh, here somewhere. Therefore, we consider it as oligopoly. Now we can do a number of experiments. For example, instead of using three firms, I can use eight firms. So now I have eight firms and uh, they, the sum of their market shares should be equal to 100. should not be less than that or more than that because uh, this is how it is. The share should sum, uh, all the shares there should uh, sum to 100%. Now here we are, the solution of that uh, certain experiment where we have firms that start from A and end at H, that is eight firms are involved. These are, this is the value of the first firm share, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. And you know this hundred usually gets cancelled out and this percentage sign as well. So we are left with this numerical value of the share only. And then we calculate its square and we do the sum after calculating all these squares. So the answer in this case is 2036. So it is still representing oligopoly because if I refer to this table, it is still in between this. Well, it is smaller than the previous answer and that was 3800. And that was in case of three firms. You see, if we have increased the number of firms from three to eight firms, the competition has increased. Still it is in uh, oligopoly because these are very few firms and it is falling uh, in between this range. So it is an oligopoly but the competition, the degree of it has fallen, has increased uh, due to which uh, it has become uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a kind of weaker oligopoly where there are uh, more competitors. So this is what we have written here. Another experiment would be that if we uh, use only one firm who has all of the share of the market, we put the value in this formula, definitely it will be one term only and the answer will be 10,000. So it will represent a monopoly, this is like we saw in the table. So this is the interpretation of it, you can pause the video and read it. Now uh, another interesting experiment that we can do here. So we know that in oligopoly there is a possibility of mergers because there are a few firms and if they wish they can merge for a greater benefit. So let's consider this case and how uh, HHI can uh, be um, you know, affected by this. So we are considering a case uh, where uh, we are assuming that there are four firms and for that we want to calculate HHI, that is the index. And um, you know, there is a possibility before and after merge. What happens that uh, is that we have three firms that are performing better than the th fourth firm. Uh, because all of them are making 30% uh, earning the 30% uh, share of the market because they are producing 30% of the goods. And this one that is the last form or the fourth form is uh, producing only 10% of the uh, market share. So we can calculate the HHI uh, um, before the merger and the formula will be the same, the first share, second share, third share and then the fourth form share which is 10%. So we have found the value of the HHIA and it is 2800 which is representing the monopoly because we can refer back to that table and see that what is the meaning of it. Now uh, we consider that three of the firms they merge because they considered that they were in a good position there and they can merge to benefit even more. So if these three firms merge then the HHI will be affected and that will be the situation of post merger. For that what we can do is simply we can use this formula again but in this case the 330 percent will be combined into one and then we will apply the square unit. Why? Because this is after the merger. Now the three firms are now acting as a unit. So we consider that uh, this is one unit and that's why we sum their shares. So it will become 90 percent here and it will remain 10 percent and when we calculate the value we see that it is now a greater value compared to the previous value. So as it is increased, it means that the competition has decreased. In other words, now the monopoly has become stronger 
and uh, because of these uh, three firms are now acting as a unit and this is the other firm so it has become a kind of doubly where there are only two producers. So you see that uh, in case of merger we can still assess the situation by using this simple tool of HHI that is Huffrindel Hirschman Index and this can help us to understand the situation and make the decisions on the basis of this quantitative tool which is this index. So I hope you have benefited from this video and you can give it a thumbs up. Thank you.